Welcome to RV Talk Radio. Here we talk about RV living, RV lifestyles, and RV travel. We also celebrate the RV lifestyle that gives us the chance to do outdoor activities that we couldn't do in a normal lifestyle. So thanks for joining us. Grab yourself a cup of coffee, a cup of tea, and let's talk about RVs. Hello everyone, this is Rob and welcome to episode 61. I think today we're going to talk about, actually not all RV stories are happy ones, and I thought I'd also cover a little bit about the Antelope Slot Canyon Tour. Oh my goodness, we got a lot to talk about. Stay tuned. Well, we just got back from our three-day weekend up at Page, Arizona. Uh, kids went up, brought the grand, uh, <laughs> grandkids with them. And uh, uh, oh my gosh, talk about total chaos 24-7. And uh, we had all ranges of kids from age 15 all the way down to four. So uh, we had uh, one at 13 years old and then four. And it's so funny because, you know, different stages of growing up, uh, different, you know, different parts of attitudes come up and things. And so you've got the four-year-old that just wants to do everything, but is also always frustrated because they can't keep up with the big boys. And then you get the middle one that's kind of like, trying to do their thing but always being overdone by the older one and then the older one is at that stage that parents <laughs> are, are paying <laughs> but uh it all comes back and circles around and the whole works and so it was really a busy weekend uh trying to get used to uh having three kids around it's been a while and uh, a lot of it's uh, patience, a lot of patience. And when we went on this trip, as one of those is my daughter's got the three boys. And so it's pretty much we're going to go with their their schedule, not ours. And so with that kind of attitude thing, we were we did great. Uh, but anyway, so we went up to Page, Arizona. And um, the first day, we uh, took them out on the boat. This was actually what I thought was the most enjoyable part about this is why I bought this boat is for the family and, and something different. And, uh, I think I've told you in my other shows is our kids, uh, grandkids down here, uh, live in Phoenix. So they tend to be more, um, or oh, what would you call it? Electronic. <laughs> we'll use that word. And so we get on the boat and everything's cool. Except, you know, there's always procedures and there's things to pack. And, of course, they want to go now, but all the parents are trying to get everything put away and all works. And so we finally get on the water. The little one, four-year-old, running around going, this is awesome. And, the whole, uh, of course, all three kids want to help drive the boat and the whole works. But the funny part was we finally got across the lake and uh, we went to a cove and anchored the boat uh, just in this little cove with a beach and the whole works. So we're there, and it's like, okay, kids, this is this is your time to play, swim. You guys can play with the dinghy. We took the dinghy down and gave them a couple of oars. Um, and it's like, uh, it was like, <laughs> what? <laughs> we have to, we're going to go into a, a wild lake? <laughs> of course, four-year-old's going, is there sharks? <laughs> and <laughs> and uh, it was kind of funny. Uh, it was kind of a blank look at first. So, you know, after uh, threatening or <laughs> uh, challenging the older ones, you know, they're in their swimsuits. They got their uh, 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 life preservers on. Uh, one finally gets in the water and uh, realizes it's it's kind of cold, but not that much. It's 78 degrees or something like that. So quickly you adapt. And uh, finally the second one goes in. And then finally grandma goes in. And the, finally the four-year-old says, I got to come out with them. And so we've got kids in the water. And uh, it was once they discovered that swimming, which swimming has always been in swimming pools and stuff like that, that swimming can have a purpose. Like swimming can take you to the beach. Swimming can be fun and relaxing. 
Uh, it was a, you could see it was like a whole new concept of swimming. Swimming can take me places. And so uh, that's where it was fun to watch them discover that they swam to the beach, uh, which is all along Lake Powell. And uh, then they could go out there and discover um, all kinds of cool rocks. They even found some seashells and, uh, yes, seashells. And uh, um, just uh, realized, I mean, they just, you could see them just suddenly um, approve of this new concept of being on a boat, playing in the water. And, of course, the parents kind of like, <laughs> I'm good. <laughs> Watch the kids have fun. This is relaxing. So me and uh, Sherry went in the water. And I've always wanted to say, I've really, I've always swam uh, because I had to, not because it was fun. So I went in the water, too, just to kind of break my paradigm and work my way out to the beach. And it was like a beached whale. And got out there, and Sherry and I both are on the beach, and the kids are playing in the water, and they got a hold of our uh, dinghy, and they're rowing around in it, watching them trying to figure out how to go straight, and it was just hilarious. Of course, then Sherry and I are kind of looking from the beach out to the water, seeing our boat on anchor, and our dinghy out in the water, and we both looked at each other, <laughs> kind of like, woohoo. And then it occurred to us, we've totally lost our boat. And our dinghy, uh, it's been taken over. We're on the, we're on shore. <laughs> All of our stuff's out there, and it's totally under the control of our kids and grandkids, which was totally awesome. So anyway, that was really enlightening. Um, a whole new activity, and, and like we always talk about in RV lifestyles, that this is you know so many opportunities to try something new. And this was totally new for us. We usually, like I've said in old shows, that boats have always been a workhorse for us. They're fishing boats and things like that. So to have a boat to be a pleasure craft is uh, kind of unusual for us. And uh, unfortunately, the next day after we did the slot canyons, which I'm going to talk about in a little bit, um, it was pretty windy and uh, it was kind of questionable. And we probably could have gone out, but then it would have been kind of miserable. And then there was the other thing I was worried about is when you, they wanted to be pulled on a tube thing, and uh, which is fine. But then there's always, I want to do it. It's my turn. How come he got to go so long and, and that kind of thing? And, um, and then the water being rough and stuff like that, uh, it just didn't hit us as being a fun activity. So um, the kids were... Uh, uh, even the parents a little bit were disheartened a little bit because they really wanted to do that activity. But grandma and grandpa kind of kind of said no. <laughs> and so we said, which is not unusual when you have own a boat. Even even if you're in Washington State, if some the weather kicks up, you just say, all right, uh, let's do a different activity. So then, of course, we dis discovered, well, guys, since we can't go swimming, Let's go bowling, because <laughs> Grandma and Grandpa don't do that anymore. So it's like, get out of the doghouse. It's like, yeah. So we go up the page, and I swear we found a bowling alley that was 200 years old. <laughs> it was, you can still see the, it was so old that you, the balls still rolled down in the open and rolled up, and you know you could get your hands crushed and all thing. Um, but uh, we had a blast until we broke it, <laughs> and. Uh, I think it only had like 12 lanes, and uh, three of them were broke down. Uh, two racks of, of balls, and uh, you know, as well as bowling alleys where you really wanted to wash your hands after you're done. <laughs> and Lord knows how long the shoes have been not cleaned or something. So anyway, we uh, uh, had a great time, and then we went out for ice cream, and everything was cool. But uh, uh, anyway, great weekend. Learned a lot. Kids learned a lot and probably even opened their minds to the outdoors a little more. So I think it was a success. <laughs> blah, blah. So anyway, but I really want to uh, move on and talk about the Antelope Slot Canyons. If you ever get a chance to head down to the Arizona area, 
I highly recommend that you get the opportunity to all the kinds of things to do. Of course, there's the Grand Canyon. There's a horseshoe overlook where you can see the uh, uh, Colorado River um, do a kind of a horseshoe shape. And you've seen some pictures of that, I'm sure. Anyway, gorgeous area. But then you get to Page. Page is where the actual uh, Glen Canyon Dam is, which is the beginning of the Grand Canyon. And that's also the beginning of Lake Powell. And Lake Powell is gigantic and goes, uh, oh, I think about 180 miles long and goes into Utah. And uh, beautiful, 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 just beautiful. I don't know also. But um, they also have inland from the lakes in the canyon what they call the Antelope Slot Canyons. And what they are is it's if you been down in the desert areas there's you know there's washes everywhere and washes are always there's no water in them until it rains and we get and then they uh, water doesn't soak into the ground like places in the northwest so it all accumulates goes into different streams and then comes into the washes and flushes through and and uh, uh, you know people don't build houses or anything in washes because they flood out constantly uh, to relieve the water and so what the slot uh, canyon is, is a wash that over th hundreds or thousands of years, water has worked its way into the ground and started carving a canyon underground. And uh, uh, through, you know, it must be thousands of years, it's got to be. Um, it's created these crevices and and it still does it today um you can't go you cannot go into the antelope slot canyons if it's raining if there's a rainstorm or a monsoon that goes through uh danger danger because water comes down to wash goes back into the slot canyons and does its job of of uh of curving the walls and so you got this big cut into the ground which you can see the sky up above um and the, the water pressure and the amount of water it passes through to does these incredible cuts. Everything's smooth. And uh, with the light coming through uh, and the type of red rock they've got there, it just glows with beautiful colors. And so that's what the Antelope Slot Canyon is. And this property, I guess, is owned by a guy named Ken because it's called Ken Canyon Tours or whatever. Um, but it, you know, it's basically ran by the Navajo Indians there. And so uh, it's not exactly cheap. I, I think it's $8 just to enter the area. And then another $28, I think we paid each. Or tw $20. $20 each. Uh, so a total of $28 apiece uh, to do this tour. And, uh, of course, the biggest mistake... Well, it's not a mistake because, remember, we're... We're doing this with our daughter and their family and their working folks. And the three-day weekend is their, you know, they have to be weekend warriors. And so we have to be weekend warriors with them. And so uh, we knew also that we needed to be very patient because Sherry and I aren't used to big lines and stuff like that because we offset our these kind of things by taking um, weekdays to do this kind of stuff. But anyway, so thousands and thousands of people at Page, Oregon that weekend. Or should I say Arizona, sorry. So anyway, uh, um, so the first thing is that you finally, you, you, there's cars everywhere, out in the middle of the desert. And you have to get in line. And you're standing in a wash in 90, 95 degree, <laughs> degree weather. Hundreds of people, over a thousand, uh, it's got to be, uh, lined up and then they're kind of put into groups and everybody's got a guide. And it's going to be, and it was, at least an hour and a half wait in this desert landscape. And so, you know, and they tell you, you, you should bring umbrellas for shade, you should bring water, which we did. And uh, you can just imagine how the kids were enthusiastic for about five minutes and then they realized this is not much fun. So it was an hour and a half of trying to keep everybody's hopes up, kind of keeping their um, enthusiasm up. And uh, it was tough. And it would be tough for any teenager and kid. 
And, of course, the mom, uh, our daughter, um, uh, the four-year-old, uh, finally went back up on the hillside and, and uh, stayed in a shady area as the line went down. So we just told her to join us when we got closer. And, you know, the older ones are kind of like, we're going to die out here. And <laughs> <laughs> me and Grandma are just like, hey, we've been through this before. Patience, patience, patience. Have faith in your mom and, and your parents that we're going to go see something fantastic. So the hour and a half goes by and we come to the slot part. And, of course, I'm asking myself because I'm, you know, not exactly light, you know, a little heavy, a lot heavy. Anyway, I'm kind of like, am I going to even fit through that crack in the ground? And, uh, of course, it's a little deceiving. By the time I got up there, it was like a piece of cake. So what was really cool is, uh, well, they told us we couldn't have video. So I'm in line and realizing that every other person's got video with them. I put mine away because I was following the rules. But I had to have, have my cell phone, and I did smuggle my 360 camera because the signs didn't say anything about 360. <laughs> <laughs> so, you know, there's a little technical blur there. So I took advantage of it. So uh, we decided to do the tour. Besides, there was less to carry. Um by utilizing Sherry's, you could take regular pictures. Sherry uh, did a collage, and we did a lot of, and the video will come out about this um, this tour. And uh, so Sherry took some beautiful pictures. Uh, I let my grandson uh, carry the 360 camera, um, the oldest one, and uh, which was kind of cool because it gave him a mission. And uh, so we actually created a 360 um, video of the slot canyon tour and that actually came out on friday this comes out the, this show comes out the following monday and uh so it's about 14 minutes long and you just got to realize it's a uh, 360 video but it's going to be rare footage that you've never had a chance to see what the slot canyon tour is like and uh it it's we did a 360 from beginning to end and it was kind of fun because we had some foreigner uh asian folks there that uh they had some really cool little cameras and including one of those new polaroids um and they were just fascinating because they never seen a 360 camera before so anyway you'll see them <laughs> just <laughs> they thought that was the coolest thing they ever seen and so uh, um, off we went into the canyons. Now there's two tours you can take. There's what they call the upper canyon and lower. The upper canyon um, is only like 600 feet of canyon to actually see. The lower canyon is almost a quarter mile. And so uh, the one thing you don't realize, you kind of realize it, is you're actually there's built-in stairs that they put in there and stuff like that. So you kind of continue to go down and down and down and down and so by the time you get to the end of the tour you realize you got to go up up and up so if you don't like heights and if you get claustrophobic the slot canyons are probably not for you um i i've told people i don't like heights that much but i can get through it uh, i'm not terrified i'm just uncomfortable so i did fine i just didn't have any problems at all uh, it was terrifying just trying to get the four-year-old uh, up some of those stairs and down some of those stairs. But uh, with the cooperation of their parents and the way they did it, uh, it went smooth as silk. Um, so anyway, it was a beautiful, um, it wasn't, it was worth the wait. I can tell you that for sure. And uh, it was beautiful and amazing. And so uh, a lot of people went through that canyon that day and... Uh, uh, that's just how the three-day weekends. It is also amazing of how many foreign people are there. I mean, of all cultures. You wonder how in the heck do they find that place? I know a lot of them are coordinating their trips through um, tour companies and stuff like that. But uh, it's just amazing. I mean, there is uh, folks from every country, I swear, in languages uh, I didn't recognize. Um, anyway, it was... Um, it's neat to know that they're coming to see all this. Um, and then, of course, I have to keep saying, is, is their country not that interesting? <laughs> I, 
I don't know. But uh, uh, yeah, and and they were all charming. So you know, and a lot of them struggle to get through things because they don't know English that well. Uh, but yeah, it was a lot of fun. Uh, the Antelope Slot Canyon Tours. Um, on the internet, just type that in. Slot Canyon uh, Tour. They'll come up. We went through Ken's um, Antelope Slot Canyon Tours. Uh, seemed like a pretty good operation. They did all right. And, uh, you know, uh, I it's one of those things like the Grand Canyon is like you've got a bucket list. You should add that to your bucket list. You should see the Grand Canyon, and you should see the Canyon Slots. Now, if your health is um, not uh, kind of hold you back uh maybe you have a hip problem and things like that you may not want to go to the lower one but uh, the upper one might be easier if you have a hip problem knee problem thing like that or you don't like heights or claustrophobic it's a very short tour but i highly recommend it uh put it on your bucket list it was definitely worth the wait As I was saying earlier in the show, uh, I don't know what it is lately, but I've ran across um, RVers that, I don't want to say sad stories, I want to say more like reality, uh, I've met. And there's three lately that I I caught wind of. The first one was uh, uh, a couple that are here that are um, in their RV and they're her husband got in a motorcycle accident and had a head injury and was uh, is kind of down here going through therapy and kind of recovering. And uh, it was interesting to hear what she had to go through. Her husband was actually in a coma for, I guess, like three months. I uh, was worried that he wouldn't come out of it and would have side effects, and he's actually doing quite well. And uh, the RV, and their RV is actually a trailer and is uh, relatively smaller than most of the trailers here. So I imagine there's been a lot of financial hardship and et cetera, and living in small quarters has been tough on them, which she admits. And uh, I just want to tip my hat to what they're going through, and I wish them the best. Uh, Another gal that was here already... um, came here like six years ago and her husband had a massive uh, stroke um, and actually had to be put in a nursing home down here and actually owned a a home in Washington State and was here for several years. Don't know all the details. I just only kind of get the hearsay of some of the folks have been helping her. Uh, She finally with her husband, I believe, still being in the nursing home here, uh, just recently uh, took their rig up to Washington to sell the house up at, in the Port, Port Angeles area. And uh, I don't, you know, of course, I don't know anything of the story after that because she was gone by the time we got back from our big trip. And uh, just sad. And, uh, and now I just met another person who took over the same spot she was at. Very, very nice uh, lady. And once again, her husband had a stroke and all of his right side is paralyzed. And so they're hanging out here as he tries to recover and goes through therapy and things like that. And so um, they're using, and they've got a motor home, which is much more roomier. But uh, once again, very sad. I wish them the best. Uh, but I'm, I've just I've seen so much more of this, and of course I've seen folks that have come down here with RVs to uh, take advantage of some of the um, medical clinics that are down here in Phoenix. And once again, I guess that kind of makes me uh, want to remind people that our show is not a how-to. Uh, we're we do talk about tips and tricks of RVing, but our, you know, there's some great podcasts out there that, um, and I'll even say their name, uh, the Higgins have a beautiful uh, podcast, and they've been doing it for years. And his background has actually been technical and working in RV parks and, and technician-type work. 
um, for years and years and years and years. And, and I, you know, me and Sherry know we can't compete with that. And, and there's other folks that are very analytical about their RVing and, and, and there's others that that's their whole life is RVing and that's great and they put out great content and if you're a new RVer trying to learn things about your RVing I highly recommend their channels um, we knowing that that was what uh, we wanted to create the RV lifestyle uh, what is RV life and so you will constantly hear us about talk about real life real things happening to people in the RVing. We've talked about things like um, uh, tra <laughs> uh, travel nurses and their lifestyles. We met single people. We have people we met that lost everything and decided to recover and live in an RV and do normal jobs under 55 uh, just to recover and save money for retirement. We've met uh, families uh, of hardship, and we've also just met people of traveling for fun. We've had families with kids that are doing homeschooling. Uh, we meet them all, and uh, generally, I, I'll still use the statistic that at least 90% of the people we meet and see in these RV parks are not doing shows. They're not doing videos. They're just living and the RV is a resource to them for whatever their personal need is at the time. And yes, we do meet people that have retired and they've either sold everything or they're doing some uh, snowbirding. Uh, they're financially, uh, everything went just great for them in their lives and they're just traveling. But I still find that the minority, the minority. I know you don't want to hear that, that all these people are like, I'll get an RV and travel, travel, travel. And it's like, that's not what's happening out here. Uh, there is people doing that. There's a lot. And it's great. And there's, you know, folks doing caravans and, and a lot of folks that uh, in traditional work style have money saved and got a pension. But as we're seeing this new end of the baby boomer kind of thing and also the companies have changed their ways and, and a lot of people who got wiped out during the 2008 recession, uh, we're seeing um, just real people using RVs as a practical means to either recover financially, to reduce their overhead, to save money and live comfortable. There's people using their RVs for... Um, a mission like medical services and things like that or it matches their job type of job jobs are getting it's not unusual to find a lot of people that either are temporary contract or moving around a lot in sales or something like that and an rv is perfect for that because of the problems of if you want to rent a house or an apartment they want a one-year lease and if you don't do a one-year lease you're going to be penalized so anyway, going back to the original thing I was making is RV Talk Radio is about RV lifestyle, RV living, RV life, RV and RV travel too. Uh, but we want to point out that when you see hear this show, we can give you ideas of how the RV can work into your life as a benefit, whether you're traveling or not, and if you're young or old. Um, we cover it all and sometimes we cover the sad part but maybe I just had somebody listen to my show who whose husband or wife is going through cancer treatment maybe the RV is a way to if you lived in uh, Wyoming and you want to use the cancer treatment center down here in Phoenix I'm telling you the RV is a great affordable way to be near the hospital for treatments and things like that and it could go beyond kind of just sicknesses. It could be a rehab programs, all kinds of stuff where the RV makes sense to um, find a practical way to take care of your human needs. And, um, and it also has some great benefits to uh, help and reduce overhead. So I guess sometimes I, 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 I'm responding to the fact that somebody will say, well, you're not talking about RV tips and tricks that much. And I go, well, a lot of the other people are. And that's 
great and they're good at it. And I want them to do that. And so I'm not going to talk that much about winterization when there's five other channels talking about it too. Um, and uh, I, I actually listened to one of my uh, uh, other people that are making a podcast and they were talking about slide maintenance and uh we we you know we talk about our slide maintenance and stuff but uh they're really into it and they know people and they've actually worked on rvs and actually came out with some great details of how to maintain your slide and also knew all the different kinds of mechanical ways that the slides work and uh i commend them it's great reporting great information um, once again, we're going to focus on people, uh, lifestyle, or life of an RVer. And so you'll hear us like everything we are. I mean, we are always RVers, but you can see we branch out and do all kinds of different things because we own an RV. <laughs> so, anyway, um, I, I guess I'm defending that a little bit, but I'm also making sure that you know how we're defined. Uh, we are defined as the RV lifestyle, not the RV um, D, DIY kind of uh, show. And uh, there's lots of folks doing that, and there's plenty of it and different versions of it. And, and like I said, we'll just talk about the things that we're doing at the time, but uh, we'll probably pass you on to other shows or other channels that are doing detailed how-to videos. And so... Anyway, that's, that's why I wanted to talk about on that. So let's move on. Did I mention to you guys that Sherry and I should be homeless pretty soon? <laughs> and, uh, uh, so I'm going to talk about a little bit of the drawbacks about full-time living in an RV if you need to stay in one place. So maybe uh, could be a little bit our fault, but... Uh, um, I thought I was being diligent, but we got here in April and uh, we uh, found out through Sherry's um, job that she got down here that it looks like it's going to be a while that we'll be down here. So we extended ourselves all the way to the first of the year. Well, it was like maybe about two weeks ago I went in and I go, I think we're going to have to be here longer. Well, of course, down here the snowbirds start coming down. And so that's their prime time that this place gets packed. So now I'm on a, Sherry and I are on a waiting list, and we may not have a place to stay here, at least, uh, after the first of the year. Um, of course, you know, they said, well, they get cancellations and stuff. They um, seem like they might, but they're also saying you still might want to have a backup plan. So... Uh, now there's a little bit of like worry and, and I didn't want to uh, worry that uh, and I hate to set up an appointment with another RV park and then cancel and to me it just seems like uh, I don't want to hurt an RV park or um, prevent them from being able to rent a space because I was holding it and then I canceled it later I just you know business wise it just bothers me but I think that's what we're going to have to end up doing so sounds like Sherry and I probably need to get on the phone and uh, find an RV park in Arizona while it's still early in the uh, year to uh, well it's not that early actually we're September already and of course the snowbirds are starting to trickle in uh, starting now and so yeah I mean uh it's not that easy to just find a place and hang out for a year or two in one, one spot. Uh, there's drawbacks to that. And, of course, there's city ordinances and things like that where um, RV parks are required that the RVs must be moving uh, after six months or something like that. And it could be from one space to another. And so um, uh, now we actually are moving our RV from one space to another uh, as a, uh, because... I could only hold this one spot till this point, and in two weeks I've got to move over actually one slot, and then I'll finish the rest of my year. Uh, so not only did that not that inconvenient, the other part is we, I think that also allows us to meet the ordinances of the area. Of course, this is a, a Indian nation here, so uh, it may not actually be applicable uh, in this particular RV park, but 
Yeah, we might be homeless. Oh no. <laughs> I may I may find myself rotating from Walmart to Walmart. Good thing there's a lot of Walmarts here. <laughs> I'm just kidding, guys. Uh I, I'm sure that it'll work out, and uh, I'll let you know if it does. But um, definitely got to keep it in the back of our minds, and we definitely should be proactive to just sit on this information and not do anything about it would not be a good idea. So I think we'll probably start getting on the phone this weekend and start uh, looking around to a couple of – I mean, there's lots of RV parks here, and we should be able to pull something off. We, I know we'll come back here even if we had to leave, so – we're really only talking about three months or four months in another area and then come back to this one. So we'll see. Just um, take control of the situation, make it work, and it always works out. I found out just the other day at my neighborhood Safeway grocery store, and if you happen to be in an area that has Safeways, Maybe your store does this too, but I found out accidentally I had to go to the grocery store because we're kind of out of whack here and we had uh, so it was a Wednesday. So I went to the grocery store and got our groceries and I do that. Just one last thing, uh, yeah, Sherry, I try to do there's certain things I've started to do. Uh, take over a little bit just to take you know, the load off of Sherry. So we used to go together. And we still do once in a while because she's like got shampoos and things like that that she prefers. And I'd probably mess that up. But anyway, uh, I get to the cash register. And, and I also, I've told you in earlier shows that Safeway has an app. And if you go on an app, you can go in there and actually uh, make sure you can get, without physically having coupons, you can get your coupons and, um, you know, your card has a number. And then you tell it what store you're shopping at. And the coupons, you can pick them out and then turn them on. And, and then they automatically recognize that you have that coupon and you get a discount. And um, so that's what was great. But then I'm doing my thing. And at the end of the ringing up everything, he goes, oh, this is senior day, which they didn't even ask me what my age is. So I guess my age, I look my age, which was kind of sad. But <laughs> anyway, we... Uh, I, can't, I believe I got 15% off my groceries. And uh, I saved uh, almost $40 in my grocery bill when they're all done with my coupons and my senior discount. So I, and so I was like, really? <laughs> Sweet. And uh, I watched my bill go from 179 to like low 141 or something uh, like that. And so uh, I had to get some meat and stuff. So anyway, we've been on vacation a lot. We had to catch up. So anyway, getting back to that, I uh, I found out that every f first Wednesday of the month, they have senior discount. So if you happen to be over 55, I believe, um, and you shop at Safeway, find out if your store is doing that and then put it on your calendar and your s cell phone. And boy, that's the day I'm going to go buy meat and stuff. So now that I know that, and I just... And, um, I, uh, I, I'm going to take advantage of that. Um, that's, that's big. And uh, so anyway, uh, <laughs> that was one thing I wanted to uh, bring up to you. The other thing uh, I, I still I just marvel at, at this craziness here, but you probably saw, if you watch our videos, we had two videos come out about our hummingbird feeders. And we got these new ones now that are flat, and they have a little... Uh, receptacle things that you uh, have a uh, suction cup that you put on your window and so we had one and uh, amazingly it just seemed to do so much better than the upright ones and they don't leak as much we uh, with here there's always wind and so they're tipping and moving and we're getting uh, nectar all over the side of the RV and it was dripping a lot and then they'd empty out these flat ones don't seem to have that problem so we put the flat one on in one of the windows and the little birds just love those things. We are having we were going nuts. So I immediately the next day I'm going. Oh, Sherry, you know, Sherry loves these hummingbirds thing, and it's like a, a, a religion to her to refill them almost every day. And so I bought a second one uh, to put on the other side of that same window. 
And it is just, and, and I swear my cat Lily is going to have a heart attack. But these birds, it's a relentless, uh, and it's so fun now to, even when I'm doing this show, and that's what keeps reminding me to talk about them, is, I mean, not only do they go into the bird feeder, but it's, it's like they're looking in all the windows, and uh, there's kind of like bird fighting going on. They're very aggressive birds, uh, but the hummingbirds are just a pleasure to watch all day. And it, uh, for someone like me that works at home, uh, it's really, really nice to have them here to kind of entertain me <laughs> and the cat. And so um, if you get a chance, go check out our videos we did earlier this week uh, about hummingbird feeders. Uh, and it will say flat hummingbird feeders. Uh, check them out. And uh, we you know, put some GoPros out there and, and filmed them. And you'll notice that you'll be able to see their wings move a little bit. is because I filmed it at uh, um, 60 uh, frames per second, which slows it down a little bit. So you can actually see their wings a little bit. So, yeah, um, it was fun, and they're not real long videos, and check them out. And uh, if you get a chance, put a flat, if you have hummingbirds in your area, put a flat hummingbird feeder on your window, and uh, they're easy to maintain, and they don't seem to leak as much. So, check them out. I did want to take the time to say thank you to a few folks that sent us some notes. I appreciate it. Uh, once again, I just want to remind you that you can go to rvtalkradio.com, go to the contact button, and send us a note. It's private; nobody else sees it. You can also go to the web, uh, well, uh, to the Facebook page of RV Talk Radio, hit the little message thing up above, and give us a note that way. Or you can go to RV Talk uh, RV Travel Buddy <laughs> and use the message thing above that. You can even go to our personal Facebook page if you want and shoot us a note by hitting the little message button at the top. And last but not least, you can just shoot me a mail directly at rob at rvtalkradio.com and it'll come directly to me and we'll try to address your question or statement as quick as possible. I had one gentleman uh, send me a note um, that asked a little bit about some maintenance type stuff about putting uh, things into walls and stuff. And I got to admit, that's not a strong point of mine because uh, I just I tend, tend to buy newer RVs and they kind of have what I ha want already. And I'm not really making any big modifications. Uh, not a problem with that. I mean, I love people that are doing that. I do recommend a website. Um, um, you've heard me talk about him before, Three Tails RV. He's got more projects going on in his RV than you can imagine. He's ripped out walls and... It, and all kinds of uh, appliances and could certainly answer some of the questions you had about uh, putting things into the walls and stuff like that. So uh, I would recommend uh, if you get a chance and you have questions about uh, some modifications you're going to make to your rig and you're worried about what's going to happen when you remove a wall or dive into a wall, uh, contact Aaron at Three Tails RV and uh, let him... Uh, know what you're doing and what your concerns are and I bet you he's got some experience in that particular uh, subject so yeah give him a holler uh, I had another person uh, shoot us a note or a comment of uh, asking us well are you eventually going to live on your boat and the answer to that is I'll never say never but it won't be this boat this boat that we bought is yes a bigger boat and it's good size and we can sleep in it, and we do. And you can cook in it, but it's um, minimal. And does have a restroom, all that stuff. But it would not be a comfortable boat to live in. Uh, there's no television or entertainment system. Uh, the seating is not really designed for that. It's actually more designed to be outside of the boat, up the upper half, uh, to enjoy everything around you. Uh, I think it's a true test for us to see maybe if that might be something we want to do in the future if we decide to buy a sailboat. Because if we buy a sailboat, we would also enjoy the fact that we could go sailing, but a lot of sailboats seem to be more designed for people to be in them for long term. Uh, there's also power boats too that have that too. Uh, I don't know the answer to that. And, and of course... For every action, there's a reaction, and of course, uh, you'd have to live closer to the water. 
Uh, you just don't know what cards are going to be dealt to you. So it's hard to, I don't want to say no to that, but uh, we just wanted a weekender kind of uh, uh, boat, but, but you know, a good size that was comfortable for more than just two people uh, when we have the kids and, and, and guests over. And so, yeah, um, I'll let you know on that. Uh, the other thing I was going to tell you about, and I'll try to do a video on it, is we have what's called a cooling system or air conditioning um, water exchange system that we're going to fire up, and we don't know if it works or not. And a lot of boats have them up here because it's, it's hot. So the way they work is they're a pump that constantly pump water through some coils, and, of course, air blows across it, and the you know, water is always pretty cool. And that's how you cool uh, uh, how you cool down your uh, boat or sailboat. And uh, uh, they work on shore when you're plugged in. Now the other way that they work is if you also have a generator. We don't have a generator, and like a lot of sailboats we looked at, uh, more expensive ones and stuff, they had generators too, so you could cool down. Because these guys are cruising down to the Philippines and places like that, or down south. The equator and stuff, they're in really hot um, climates, and it's nice to be able to cool down your rig because it can get so hot you can't even walk on the floorboards or uh, on the deck of your boat because it's so darn hot. So hopefully some of the stories and some of the repairs or some of the uh, systems that we're firing up um, are uh, going to be interesting and also are applicable to RV uh, lifestyle too. But no, yeah, getting back to are we going to live in it? No. Uh, but, uh, you know, last show I talked about module living. Um, it's a module to us to put in different locations, uh, different lakes or ocean uh, in the future uh, that we can travel to and be able to stay in for a few days and be comfortable. Uh, if we turns out that we really like that, we'll probably upgrade the boat to even a more living lifestyle boat that we could stay weeks in uh, or maybe even a whole season and uh, we actually have a good friend of ours uh, named Kim um, and she uh, contacted us saying uh, we've known her for years uh, in fact we graduated uh, in high school together um, they actually live in their boat six months of a year and then the other six months their boats uh, they're are up in Tacoma Washington and their RV is stored down in California, and they live in that for six months of the year. Because it gets kind of cold uh, up in the Northwest, uh, even living in a boat. So, yeah, um, who knows on that? But it was a good question, and I appreciate that question. And, um, you know, we might it might change. And, yes, we still really like the sailing, but not right now. We're not ready for that yet. Uh I'm looking forward to that in the future, but Sherry and I need more time. And the only way we're going to have more time is if she's retired. And that's not going to happen until we get in our 60s. So until then, we make do. <laughs> and hopefully we're giving ideas to you guys so uh, you can do activities and things you like to do um, by buying um, toys that uh, can adapt to travel and weekend type things and also uh, having them in other locations so you don't you can enjoy more than just one region uh, other comments that we got in also about the boat was uh, uh, boy it must have been expensive oh boy it must uh, that's a really nice boat and stuff and and um, so if you watched our videos you realize you know I drove over 4,000 miles to make this happen and uh uh, there is a reason for that <laughs> is I spotted this boat and talked about to the people about this boat um, because uh, it was priced well um, and you know you always want to be you're always curious if something's priced well is there something you don't know so there was a lot of interrogation going on before we went to see this boat there was another boat we had in mind, uh, much more expensive than that, um, but as Sherry and I defined and, and grinded on all this stuff, uh, caused us to go from kind of more of a work fishing boat more to a pleasure boat. And we had this one in mind. It was almost two-thirds more affordable. And uh, 
that's when we determined that it would be worth the trip to go up to Washington to get it and bring it back if it checked out. And so, uh, no, it w- I don't feel it was a very expensive boat. Uh, I feel it was a lot of boat for our money. So that's kind of the reason why we did what we did. Uh, however, the you know we did not calculate how expensive it was going to uh, going to be with the motels, and you've been hearing me bellyache about that. And of course, when I went up there, I got a discount on the price of the boat, but I also had to pay. Uh, for the repairs on the trailer, 50% of it, uh, to make sure the trailer was top-notch to travel that far. Um, and it, it wasn't really repairs as it was. Boat trailers uh, really need to be kept up. And you, if they sit around the yard for a couple of years, um, the brake systems and things like that really need to be looked at. And so I ended up spending close to $1,800 for that, uh, paid 50% of that. Um, uh, the seller actually went 50-50 with me on that. So it wasn't that bad, but I got now a fantastic high heavy-duty trailer with totally up-to-date equipment on it and systems and brakes and the uh, whole works. And so it was well worth the, the cost. But uh still feel like we bought a boat with good value. And when we go to sell it, we should be able to sell it for what we paid for it. Uh, with a little bit of um, uh, tender loving care, maybe even get a few thousand more for it. So we're pretty happy with what we did, and that's why we went to Washington. The next big question that comes along with Rob and Sherry, of course, is what's coming up in the future? (laughs) I don't know. I have no clue. (laughs) Actually, um, I know there's been talk from the daughter a little bit about the next lake we want to go see is Lake Havasu. Um, I've been doing a little bit of homework of looking at Lake Havasu, and I think it's not... I'm not sure if I want to take our boat over there. It's uh, smaller. uh, It's a younger kind of generation party kind of thing, and um, I might be getting the wrong impression of it through YouTube and stuff, but I I think I want to go there, but I don't think I want to take our boat. Maybe... uh, just go visit it and if I really have to go out in the water I'll rent a boat or something but uh, um, Lake Pleasant over here in Arizona uh, might be an option during the winter because uh, to get from where we're at Fort McDowell up to Page um, believe it or not in Arizona uh, the Flagstaff area something like that actually gets snow and can get very cold up there and uh, so we'll probably end up pulling the boat out of the water. Um, and I'll be hesitant on that because I don't want to lose my slip. Um, either store it, uh, bring it down in uh, warmer weather and store it, or just keep it stored up there and winterize it. Uh, or when, when winter comes, we take it down here to like Lake, Lake Pleasant, which is really an okay lake, but... It's nothing, nothing like uh, uh, Lake Powell. So I'm not really sure yet what we're going to do in that, except we'll probably winterize it or pull it and, and uh, move it down lower. I, uh, we don't, I didn't buy a boat to have it just sit in a yard somewhere. So we'll see. Um, don't know about that. The RV kind of told you that we may have to find another location. Um <clears throat> don't have any major changes going on there our rv is about three and a half years old now and um we're kind of like well let's maybe we'll just keep it and just keep uh, we really like this rv we have the rear entertainment system um uh, 3625 montana it was a 2013 and we love this floor plan uh my only worry is that you know sitting here in this really hot weather and stuff is um, just as terrible as being up in the northwest and being exposed to a lot of moisture and wet. Um, it breaks it, it it literally breaks down your RV. So uh, whether we try to keep this maintained and uh, and uh, working well for us throughout the years or trade it in. Um, We'll have to see what the future brings on that. So I'm not really sure. 
Um, but I am looking forward to the weather cooling. Now we're in September now. So now it's starting to show signs that the temperature is dropping. You know, we're in the hundreds all the time. Um, in Phoenix, well, uh, Arizona has a lot to offer. Uh, this is their summertime uh, coming up. Uh, so we're probably doing a lot more road trips. Uh, I like to do a little bit more in gold mine towns. Uh, this sounds like something I like to do. And there's a lot of things about Phoenix I keep discovering going, or I should say Arizona, uh, that are I'm discovering. It's like, I didn't know that was here. So, <clears throat> yeah, there should be a lot of uh, really good shows of us uh, getting out of this RV. We've kind of been um, ball and chain kind of situation because of the hot, hot weather. You probably notice if you're watching our videos when we first got here, we're going around getting cactus flowers and going on road trips. And the other problem is we love to go on road trips, but we want Cinder to come along too. And the car has just been too hot. And so that's going to start changing. So uh, we should have a lot more road trip uh, showing you areas of Arizona that I've always wanted to see and I'm hoping that you'd like to see. Holy moly, I can't believe that an hour has almost gone by. Uh, <laughs> Anyway, lots of things going on. I'm uh, kind of contemplating on a couple of interviews in the future here uh, coming up and uh, kind of introducing something new in our platform in a couple of weeks. Uh, we'll tell you more about as it gets closer. And uh, just living the, the RV dream here. Um, but uh, at the same time, we're trying and doing some new stuff, so it's kind of fun. Uh, so yeah, we do really I want to urge you guys to get the chance shoot us a note He'd love to hear your comments good bad or indifferent um, if you really want to chew us out uh, keep it you know first of all uh, uh, be polite and stuff like that uh, and we re and we like criticism that's done um, in a professional way and we try to respond to it and to um, grow with the, that kind of feedback uh, anyway, and it, we also like to hear what we're doing right, and, and then uh, we had some great questions coming up about different lifestyle things that we might be doing, and uh, hopefully we clarified some of that. And uh, anyway, uh, please take the time to uh, contact us. That's all I can say about that. So please also take the time to subscribe. Uh, if you're not listening to this as a podcast and listening to the video version, Please remember that if you have a cell phone, a smartphone, download um, a software that can play po podcasts and just type in RV Talk Radio. We are in iTunes and we'll easily search up and you can listen to our shows on your cell phone like a radio. And then you don't have to sit here through one hour on a, uh, through YouTube. You can play the podcast throughout the week until you get through the hour. So it's lots of fun. And uh, just put your... Uh, headphones on and uh, there's other really great shows out there and we recommend them too so and podcasting has a, there's a podcast about everything so um, if you haven't got into podcasting and listening to podcast shows I highly recommend it you'll love it so anyway I want to thank you guys for listening thank you so much for uh, joining us today please join us in episode 62 and we'll look forward to uh, talking to you then. So be safe. Uh, enjoy your RVs. Enjoy life in general. And we hope everybody has a wonderful life. So we'll see you next week. Take care now. Bye. Thank you for watching our videos. Please take the time to subscribe and consider being a Patreon supporter. There is many more adventures and some big surprises coming in the future with your help. Thanks again.